Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over the solution to the hands-on portion of our uh, CIS 120 midterm exam. And basically this was a word skill. Uh, that was the prominent hands-on skill for the first half of our term. And our goal was to make a newsletter that looks very similar to this. We actually saw this when we were browsing around the web, so it kind of made a facsimile. But basically it's a newsletter that has uh, several columns of text and some leader tabs and things like that. Just a little one-pager. And I gave, you some, I gave you a printed example of this along with a bulleted list, a checklist of things to do uh, that I'd be grading. So let's go ahead and create this from a blank slate. So this is really what we're finishing. It's just, and these are actually what the directions look like right here along you have the big version too. So that's ult ultimately our goal. And you started from a blank slate. So let's go ahead and knock this out. And I'm going to refer to my printed directions, which I happen to have um, printed out and right next to me. So a couple things that I did forget to mention in the directions. I mentioned it in class, but basically uh, I did use some narrow margins here. Let me go ahead and make this just a tad bit bigger there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to page layout margins and I will choose the narrow margin layout. And the first thing was this blue bar up at the top. And uh, just so you can see, I just want to make this up here. So um, the text in question isn't too critical. Um, but if we're going by the picture, we used Barker family, but I'll use uh, Simpson family. And it was a uh, June 2012. There we go. So that's our first chunk of text. And that was uh, using a Heading 1 style. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And on my home ribbon, I'll use Heading 1 style. And then we modified that style too. So let me go ahead and open up the Styles dialog box, which is right over here. Heading 1, and I will modify. And I gave you a few characteristics. Let's see. The text is centered. And the text is white. And the background color, there's actually a blue background color. Um, so I want to take care of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to jump over to Format. And I'll, I'm going to actually do Format Font on here first. And I will do All Caps because that was one of the characteristics. You may have just typed that in All Caps. Perfectly fine. And then I'm also going to do a Format Paragraph. And actually, I think we are OK. We don't really need to change any indent or line spacing here. Actually, I'm going to click OK on that one. But I'll go back and let's do some uh, format. I'll go to the border and I'll do some shading. And I think I had dark blue or something like that. So let's just pick a nice dark blue. Click OK. Click OK. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Uh, next thing on the agenda here, so I now want to get some three pictures. Now I didn't provide pictures for you, you were just to go out on the web and grab some photos. So let's do that. I'm going to jump over to Google and actually, you know, let's take that back. I'm going to jump over to Flickr.com. Let's go to Flickr. And uh, I'm going to use their Creative Commons. Let's find some copyright free uh, photos to use. So. I'll just simply head over to search and I'll jump over to their advanced search. I'll type in Australia and I'm only going to search the Creative Commons and we'll find some photos here to use for Australia. That one looks pretty cool. I'll grab this one and I'll just get a medium save image as actually I could just do a copy paste that's probably the easiest way to go so let me just do that I'll just do right click copy jump over to word and paste not worried that that image is very big and hit my back button and back and let's get another one here from the top so and I'll put uh, links to these in the videos right click get medium right click copy image and paste and let's do one more here uh, that one right next to it looks pretty cool oh there's a uh, kangaroo let's get one of those it's very Australian medium right click copy image 
and paste. There you go. And I'll put references to the uh, sources of these photos, uh, give the attribute um, in the description of the video uh, once I get this posted. And that's something you want to do with your Creative Commons photos, give attribute to the source of those uh, photographers. Okay, so I've got my three images here, but uh, I need to make these a little bit smaller and get them all side by side. So if I look at them right now, they are currently, let's check the text wrapping, in line with text, and it's actually going to be fine for me, but I want them to be smaller. So let's see, I'll just go ahead and uh, manually size them down a little bit here. Of course, since they're in line with text, they will naturally be side by side. That looks pretty good. And um, let's see, I think it'll look better if they're all the same height. So I'll just double click on an image and I'll go to the height. And let's see, I'll put in uh, 1.5 for the height. Actually, that might end up being a little bit too big. 1.5, well, that's gonna come out fine. 1.5, there we go. So my images are all the same height. There we go, that looks nice. I'm gonna press my Enter key. And I'm gonna go ahead and center these. These were centered. So I can just center this whole paragraph. There we go, so that's centered. Next on the list, oh, that's true, I wanted to format them too. So let me do a quick little format. So let's see, I'll go to this one, format. And the one I used in the uh, directions was this roundy with a reflection. So I will do that. I'll use my format painter, click, format painter, click. So they all have that same look with the round corners and the reflection. That looks pretty nice. And then next on the agenda was some word art. So you get to remember my example, heading, pictures, and I want to do this uh, word art down here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the insert ribbon, get some word art. Doesn't really matter what style I use. I'll choose something with uh, some green here. Copy the text. Good day, friends and family. And I'll choose a little word art styling here. Once again, not too important which one we use. Click on that. Now, something I did ask to do, though, uh, use WordArt to display style text. Set the WordArt text wrapping to in front of text so that it can overlap the photo reflections. I wanted to be able to move this WordArt really easily, and one of the best ways to move a picture or WordArt or any other object easily, change its text wrapping. And I've actually already got in front of text, so that's kind of convenient. And then I can just click this and drag it up, and you can see it kind of, kind of goes up over those uh, reflections there. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and I think that looks fine. Probably a darker font would have been better, but won't be too picky. Now I want to start working down here, and this is where my text is going to go. And what I asked you to do, because we're just creating some generic text, you know, just generic text columns on here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little word function equals rand four comma four and press enter. And that gives me four paragraphs of random text. Now I'm not concerned about this slight overlap here. You could fix it now, you could fix it later. It's actually one of the last checkpoints on my directions to check, to fix. Um, so I'm going to kind of ignore it for a moment. And let's see, these paragraphs, uh, and I'm looking at my bullet to list on the directions. Create some random text on the document, format this into three equal columns. So I'm going to go ahead and select these four paragraphs, page layout, columns, and I'll do the three column layout, nothing fancy there. So we've got our three columns, and it mentions use a heading two style. I want to make sure you could do a heading two style. So right above this last column, I have the word adventures and let me format that as heading two and I mentioned in here add a uh, include a heading two style modify the style with orange text bold and underlined so I'm simply going to go back to my dialog dial uh, style dialog box heading two and modify and let's see what did I say orange bold and underlined okay so bold underline. I'll just choose the orange text color here. Click OK. OK. Oh, I don't know if that took orange. There we go. Click OK. So now I've got that set. And of course when you modify a style you can see it up in your style uh, menu. So that takes care of that heading to style. Moving on down the list. So what did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There were ten key bullet points on the directions in order to complete the tasks here. Um, putting the 
text in the columns. That was the fourth one down, including the heading two style was the fifth one. So we're just moving right along. Um, let me literally check these off of my printed directions as I complete them. Okay, next is add a family photo after the first paragraph. Okay, so um, basically on our original we had a little family photo down there. So I want to complete that with mine also. I think I'm going to jump back over here. Now I don't want to lose this page because I want to be able to easily go find the references to those. So I'm going to right click and I can't open in a new tab. So let me just, I'm going to open up another Flickr window here. And I'll head right over to Flickr Creative Commons. And let me just go ahead and do a search for family. Doesn't really matter which one. Actually, let me just make sure I'm using a Creative Commons search here. I got family, Creative Commons, and search. There we go. Lots of good looking family pictures. So, how about if we just go ahead and grab. Yeah, get this old black and white one here. Right click, I'll choose medium, right click, copy the image, jump back over to Word, and let's see, and I had this uh, down here, so I'll just go ahead and control V to paste, V is in Victor, and let me add a little rotation to this. There we go, it's not too bad. And I don't like the fact that this is starting right down here, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump over to uh, Page Layout, Breaks, and I'm going to insert a column break. I didn't ask you to do this in the directions, it's just bothering me. So, there we go. So now I've got that picture up there, and I might have to clean up a little bit more of this too. But otherwise, that takes care of adding the family photo. So just four bullet points left. Include a simple table of contents after the last paragraph. Use leader tabs to connect the topic with the page number. So we're just going to make a little pretend table of contents. So I'm going to add a paragraph right down here. And I'm going to have um, photos tab to enter. I think I pressed enter. There we go. Let's make sure I'm doing this right. Getting a little bit of weirdness here, so let me just turn on my formatting marks, see what's going on there. Nope, everything looks fine. I've got an empty paragraph. I want to get rid of that empty paragraph. It's one of the later steps. So let's see, I've got my tab there. Oops, I'm right down here. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have travel routes, tab four, enter, and trivia tab 5. And we're going to make a little table of contents out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and select these three paragraphs and I'm going to do a little right align. Of course since they're only single digits it wouldn't really matter. I'll do a right align tab and I'll just stick that right there on the two. And I need to make these into leader tabs so I'll double click my little tab marker. Put leader style number two. Click OK. Got that going on. Now, in addition to doing the leader tabs, actually, that takes care of that bullet. That's all we had to do for that one. The next bullet, though, is to format the paragraphs making up the little table of contents with a thin black border and a peach or orange background fill. So I've already got them selected, so that takes care of that. Then I can just go and paragraph, and I can add a border. I'll just do an outside border. There's the border. And I can also change the fill. There's a little fill bucket, so I can change this to a peachy or orange color got that done. So there's our leader tabs and that crosses off that bullet. Okay, and the second to last thing, let me turn off my formatting marks for a minute, and I also need to put in a footer. So add a footer that includes the name of the newsletter in the center and the page number over to the right. So I'm just going to double click on my footer area and I've got center tabs and a right align tab already set up but those are not for my narrow margins. I'll fix those in just a second. So let me tab over and I'm gonna go ahead and put in, um, what is it called again? I'll just do Simpson Family and then press tab and I'll do page, space, and then I'll simply insert a page number. 
and I'll do current position plain number so I get my page number in there but since these are associated with tabs and I really want them to be centered I'll change this over to about three and a quarter three and three quarters that'll get that centered and then I'll take this one and I'll drag it over so page numbers off to the right and I also had a, a top border on here so I'll just select this whole paragraph head over to home and I'll just do a top border somewhere there it is there's my top border line all right so that takes care of that one and then last but not least is check the document for empty paragraphs I'm not fond of those empty paragraphs so let me go back into my document turn on my formatting marks and I'm really looking for and I shouldn't have too many empty paragraphs I think it was pretty good about taking care of those so um, yeah I think I'm in pretty good shape might have to do a little bit of balancing but basically an empty paragraph is when you have to hit that enter key multiple times just to create line space for instance I see that my text here you know let me click right after now watch this I'm gonna just press my enter key a few times see how I can push those columns down but in order to do so I had to create some empty paragraphs I don't want to do that so let me just backspace and if I really want space by the way this paragraph symbol right here corresponds to my images so this is not an empty paragraph but let me go ahead and just select this paragraph and I'm gonna add some after paragraph spacing click OK and I must not have gotten it so let me just make sure I'm selected after paragraph spacing there we go it's a little better and let me just add a little bit more there we go that looks pretty good okay so now it's really just in fact I think we've pretty much got it I don't really have any empty paragraphs anymore this is for where my photos are this paragraph symbol corresponds to my word art and of course I can see a paragraph symbol at the end of my actual paragraphs no empty paragraph symbols I spilt over a little bit into a, another page so that happens sometimes not a big deal let's see can I get rid of that no nope, it's probably just a little bit of a spill over here probably from this text I could do this page layout breaks do a little column break action there we go so now I'm definitely on one page my my columns are just a little bit more balanced let's turn off my formatting marks and I lost actually let me lost my page number there actually let me uh, control Z and fix it this way page layout breaks let me put that column break back in get things kind of balanced out there we go so I think that's looking pretty good yeah sometimes word is a little finicky but you just keep calm and say all right you just control Z by the way is your undo key and it looks like we are in business so if I look at my finished example there it is all right got all that taken care of looks pretty good that's the uh, the goal and then here's my version of it right here got my three pictures and stuff like that columns of text little leader tabs and if I turn my four mar formatting marks back on no empty paragraphs anywhere um, we're okay this this one corresponds to this photo here nothing wrong with that all right so that is it and of course I made the rookie mistake I've never saved this but yes yeah, certainly you would save this as you go along and this is what you would have turned in in order to complete the the word portion of your exam so have fun with that next time we'll be messing around with some Excel and PowerPoint